Have you ever encountered a hurdle with launching or growing your business? Listen, there are two things that run a business, the back end and your soft skills. I'm telling you right now, if these aren't in place, you'll lose clients and you'll lose money. You don't want that? Well, you're in the right place. Hey, I'm Dana. Hey, I'm Sarah. We're your hosts of the Entrepreneur Encounter, and we're going to give you a behind the scenes glance into our businesses, give you genuine feedback, tips and tricks, plus occasionally bring on guests that care about supporting you to grow your business organically and nurturing authentic relationships. Are you ready? Welcome back entrepreneurs to another episode. We are sure this is something that everyone in our audience can resonate with. It's having to deal with conflict. No matter if you work for someone else, you work for yourself, you have a family, you have friends, anything that you come across in your everyday life. Have you ever been faced with conflict where you find yourself in a disagreement with someone you know and that may or may not know what to do in this situation? I think it's normal for us as entrepreneurs to have some sort of conflict and then feel frazzled for about what to do in that situation. In this episode, we're going to dive into three points that can help you effectively handle those conflicts and resolve them in your business and hopefully a not so overwhelming way. Especially when you have a conflict with somebody else that doesn't agree with you in the way that you're trying to solve the problem to get to the solution, because everybody has their own perspective and their own points of views. So by understanding the points that we're going to discuss, we need to figure out what is conflict. A conflict is a disagreement between two people or more than two people. That could cause an argument, but it all depends on who you're in the conflict with. I'm pretty sure if Dana and I got into a disagreement, I don't think we would get into an argument. I think that we would put our minds together and, you know, <laughs> solve the problem. But there are some people that clash and that ends up being something more than it should be. There's three main causes of conflict. There's disagreement about the goal. So when you're setting goals, Obviously, you're trying to achieve the same thing, but there might be a disagreement on the path to get to that goal in which you need to use your problem solving skills and map out the path to get to that goal. To learn more about problem solving, we did an episode on the importance of problem solving. If you guys want to go check that out, the link will be in the show notes for that as well. So I would like to kind of bounce around a little bit and t think of examples of conflict in the workplace. So you mentioned three types so disagreement about the goal, but that could also lead to or kind of umbrella out or span out with leadership conflict where the leadership style communication preferences just don't align with you or vibe with you. And sometimes you have to work through that. It could also just be the working style. I mean, one of the trending topics right now is working remotely, working hybrid, working completely in the office. Like, what does that look like? There could be a lot of disagreements on how to achieve or the path to get to the said goal by how are you going to get the work done and like when you get it done and everything like that. And then standards or values. I'm pretty sure we have a whole episode on that. So I hope our audience is like shaking their head with agreements of Oh my gosh, I can instantly think of a situation or maybe multiple situations. So stay along for the ride after you understand what the conflict is. We're going to go through some handling the conflicts, but then we have a fun activity towards the end. And one of us is going to be in the hot seat. That's going to be exciting. <laughs> maybe. So how do we handle the conflict? Okay, so if you're in a disagreement with somebody that you're working with, like how are you going to handle this conflict? Effective communication. I know this is the key to literally everything that goes into your business because you're communicating with your clients, you're communicating with the team that you have. And if there isn't open dialogue, open door policy, as we discussed in a previous episode, then there's going to be conflict because how do you know what to do or how do you know what project to work on if nothing is being communicated. Mm -hmm. For example, so when I started freelancing, obviously it was new to me. So I had my first online virtual assistant client 
And I was literally just told like in one sentence, like what to do, but I had many questions. So obviously what needed to be done wasn't communicated well enough to me. Mind you, this person was the owner, is in leadership, and she didn't have like the systems in place to which if she hired a virtual assistant, said person didn't really know what to do. So I asked many a questions and they didn't like that, which I think is weird because I think to be able to do a task, you have to communicate that. And if the person that's doing the task doesn't understand, of course, they're going to ask questions. So they ended up just doing it themselves. Mm, gotcha. You know, I was just like, well, how would I know what to do? Like, you know, I'm new to this specific task. I've never done this before. So you, as the leader, should be able to communicate well enough so I don't have to ask the many questions so I can actually do my job. Mm -hmm. So let's use that as the example. When you meet with your colleague, your boss, your supervisor, whoever, you want to try to express your points clearly and calmly. I constantly, using real life example, I constantly tell my children, it's not what you're saying, it's how you're saying. It. If you approach the conflict with blaming or accusations right off the bat, the immediate response is not to listen, but to defend. So when we approach it, we want to express clearly and calmly as best you can. I take a lot of deep breaths throughout my day to make sure that I try and do that. You want to explain what the conflict is and why you're feeling that way. Try to maintain positive, open body language. So like making eye contact. I want to laugh at this, but like uncrossing your arms. Crossing your arms gives a very standoffish vibe. And in my networking group, we were talking about this in a way, not like we had a conflict, but just like most men, when they're standing, they don't know what to do with their hands. So they fold their arms in front of them. So I had joked as like, you look like you don't want to be approached right now. And he was like, oh, no, I'm totally fine. I was like, not the vibe you're getting. <laughs> so like then we talked about what else to do with your hands and not that I'm an expert, but it was one of those random workshops I had attended in college and one of those things stuck. So then once you have your body language open, you're clearly communicating or stating what's wrong and why you want to talk about it. Try to focus on the shared goals that help you stay calm and positive. And once you say your part, this is the part that a lot of people forget to do. And I'm going to call everyone out. Everyone forgets this at some point is to listen attentively. You got to speak. So the other person should have the same opportunity to speak back. And you actively listen because you want to be heard. And so do they. So after you're sharing your point of view, Give them time to share their opinions, and then they may even highlight a new perspective or solution. I don't think like most people. I already know that. My brain does not work like the average individual for whatever reason. So me trying to explain something to my husband who doesn't think like I do, sometimes we will go around and around and around the same circle until finally one word, one phrase finally like clicks. And honestly, half the time when you're talking about the same thing, we just see it. Our perspectives are different. So we're trying to get to the same goal. We're just explaining it differently, which causes, in our case, the conflict that we usually have. So listen attentively. Ask questions for clarification so that you fully understand their comments and hopefully they're doing the same thing for you. Listening, like active listening. I read this quote the other day and it was talking about like the problem with communication is that we just listen to reply. We don't listen. We're not listening to what other people are saying. Who say that again? <laughs> yeah, we can have a conversation, but like, are you really like listening to the person? Because this goes to like empathy, putting yourself in these people's shoes. That's why conflict happens so much is because. Nobody listens. I see this way too often in the workplace and the business world because nobody listens. And when people ask questions, it's because we're trying to understand. I've had many of conversations over the years and I am the type of person that likes to ask a lot of questions. But apparently some people don't like that. <laughs> No, seriously, I've come across people where like, you don't understand? No, I don't. Like, that's why I'm asking questions. Because when you're a kid, right, and you're in school, 
or you're learning something new. You ask a lot of questions. So the same thing can go for adults. If there's something that we've never done before, if there's something that like we are trying to understand, you should allow the other person to ask you questions. I have a lot of fun, like actually having conversations with people that actually want to listen and, you know, answer the questions. So when people ask me questions, I find it very exciting because like I get to teach somebody else something that they've never encountered before. I just like going down the knowledge rabbit hole of like, ooh, let's figure this out. Yeah. I ask a lot of questions, too. And my husband is not. It's so funny. So (laughs) personally, I'm a big movie buff. Like I love movies and I can sit here and have conversation all day about everything movies, right? So when someone's all like, I've never seen that movie. So now they ask questions about it. And I'm like, we go down the rabbit hole of talking about it. I think it's pretty cool. So when somebody's like, okay, what do you do for work? And they're like, what is that? You know, <laughs> like, you know what I mean? It's so funny because like allow somebody to ask questions. Just have a conversation. I feel like it takes less brain power, mental space and energy for you to just quickly answer the question as opposed to getting frustrated and saying, why do you keep asking questions? Just answer the question and move on. Right. Exactly. I don't know. That's my opinion. But I've also raised my kids to ask a lot of questions. And I mean, sometimes it does get on my nerves and I'm like, this must be what my husband feels like. Right, that's how I feel. <laughs> but at the end of the day, I'd rather them ask a question and do the task correctly as opposed to us now. Like, I think they did it correctly. They understood. And then I go back at the end of the day and I'm like, what in the heck happened here? Well, I thought it was this way. Why didn't you ask a question? Well, if they're not comfortable or confident in asking me as their leader, their minion leader, (laughs) then it's not going to be done correctly because they don't know. I mean, to me, it makes sense and it's common sense to not like put the forks in 20 different directions. Well, they put the forks in the drawer like they're supposed to. This is a bad example, but they don't. So if I don't answer the question, hey, this is how they all need to line up so that the drawer closes correctly or whatever. But anyway, so let's fuse this as another example of diving into our activity of identifying a conflict or challenging situation that we faced. And I'm going to fire off some questions. All right. So identify a conflict a challenging situation you've faced. It could be recently. It could be 10 years ago. Okay. So what happened was (laughs) when I was working in office, I worked for this place for two and a half years. And out of that two and a half years, I had to call out three times. Now, if you think about it, if somebody calls out many a times, that becomes an issue. But when you work for someplace and you'll only call out for three times out of two and a half years, I worked there. But here's the kicker. I called out because my son was sick. And they told me that I had to find a sick daycare. We have a daycare in the area that's like 30 minutes away from here. So if you work, you can drop your kid off. That is sick. That's like attached to a hospital. So parents use this daycare. So if instead of having to skip work to call out, you can just drop your kid off at this daycare. I'm like, no. I want to feel like that's a really cool idea. But at the same time, I'm thinking, what other germs would my sick child bring home? Yeah. So I called out once. And then the next day I said, hey, like, I can't come in. The next day I had to take him to the hospital. Like, it was just progressively getting worse. And my boss did not care. Mind you, she is a mom herself. But it really made me feel like they didn't care. So how did that make you feel? One, sad, because as a mom, for anybody that's listening that is a parent, you want to take care of your kids. You're not going to just drop them off at some random place you don't know about, right? Yeah. (laughs) My list of people who watch my children is very small. Okay. So what were you thinking when the event happened? What were your thoughts there? Well, it was after the fact that I had come back to work, and that's when not the boss, somebody under her pulled me aside and said, the boss said this, like the boss couldn't even come to me. I am very like, I love my work. The job that I had was amazing. But to feel guilty for calling out, but it's like, I'm taking care of my kid. So all these thoughts ran in my head, but I'm like, my family comes first. What was your response at the time? Well, when they had pulled me aside, I said, no, I'm not taking my kid. 
to a place that I don't know who it is. So, of course, I'm like, that's how I respond. I'm like, that's no, that is not happening. And finally, last one, list three ways you can handle this knowing what you know now. I feel like answer it from 2023's you. Still the same. Would you have handled it differently? No, I would have not handled it differently. What sucked is that it wasn't until after the fact, it wasn't the boss that came to me. It was somebody under her, which was like on the same level as me. So why would you have your, what do you call it? Your lackey, your person to come and say something to me instead of you? Yeah. So I got frustrated. I wanted to walk out, but I was like, no, like I'm in my head right now. Like I'm emotional. There's no need to do that. So then after that, I just went on about my work and it never happened again. (laughs) (laughs) So something that we talked about a little bit before and kind of going through this exercise, I have started to pivot this thought process with my oldest son who constantly feels like he's getting in trouble. So conflict or I don't even want to call it a consequence because he's not grounded, but like I do send him to like a quiet space to calm down and like redirect his overwhelming emotions. Conflict is an opportunity for growth and learning. And by implementing these points of communicating clearly and calmly, collaborating for a resolution and like brainstorming potential solutions, and then coming from the viewpoint of understanding and acknowledging the other person's perspective, you can turn a conflict into a positive environment. Like conflict doesn't have to be negative. Mm -mm. It just doesn't. We need to approach everything within our business and our personal lives as a learning opportunity. So like if you consistently have a conflict with someone, like say like we work with a narcissist or there's like something where it's constantly like always blaming someone else. It's never their fault. The opportunity to grow is honestly to let them go. You don't have to work with them, especially if you run the company. You can find someone else to fill their place. And then get back to a positive environment. I'm not saying you have to put up with it. So please, Lord, don't anyone hearing and listening, don't think that we're saying it's an opportunity to grow and learn how to just live through that type of environment. No, you can change it. You can learn. You can notice how to catch those red flags. The next time someone wants to do that, it also teaches you how to maintain your boundaries when you're in those things like Sarah had to do with her boss telling her to take her kid to basically the sick ward for her to do her job. Like, no, we're not doing that. So we really liked this exercise. I was thinking of things that I can do. We will be doing another, for those that are listening and in our Facebook group, we do a live at least once a month where we kind of have a room where we hang out. We're going to do this exercise again soon. So stay tuned in our Facebook group if you're not in there and come check it out. And we'll do this exercise again so that you can share it with our community. Well, thank you guys for tuning in. And as always, all the information is in our show notes. Till next time. Bye. Thanks for tuning in to another episode. Remember, soft skills aren't just some fluffy buzzwords that get thrown around in the corporate world. They're the key to unlocking your full potential as a professional and a human being. Don't be afraid to invest in yourself and seek out opportunities to improve your soft skills. Sarah and I have a variety of workshops, online courses, and complimentary clarity calls for you to practice in real time with us. Links are always in the show notes. And be sure to join us next time for more insights, tips, and tricks to help you succeed in your entrepreneur encounter.